I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking about surface area. In problem number 11, we'd like to find the surface area of the surface generated when the curve y equals 1 fourth of e to the 2x plus e to the negative 2x on the interval negative 2 to 2 is revolved about the x-axis. All right. Quick reminder again, what is the equation for the surface area generated when we revolve a curve around an axis? Our surface area formula is integral from a to b of 2 pi f of x times the square root of 1 plus f prime of x quantity squared dx. All right, so that is our surface area formula. Uh, we, so we need to know what f of x is. We need to know what f prime of x is. So let's start there. We already know what y is, or our f of x. y is equal to 1 fourth of e to the 2x uh, plus e to the negative 2x. So we need to take the derivative of that guy, and y prime is equal to 1 fourth. Uh, the derivative of e to the 2x is 2e to the 2x, and the derivative of e to the minus 2x is minus 2e to the minus 2x. If I want to write this a little bit cleaner, maybe I'd write it this way, that y prime is equal to e to the 2x over 2 minus um, what? e to the negative 2x over 2? Yeah, that seems good. Okay, so we have our function, we have our derivative function, and now we are ready to plug in to our surface area formula. Okay, so surface area is equal to the integral from, in this case, negative 2 to 2 of 2 pi times the function. That's up here. So that's 1 fourth of e to the 2x plus e to the negative 2x times the square root of 1 plus the derivative function which is e to the 2x over 2 minus e to the negative 2x over 2 squared dx. All right, and if we take this antiderivative, plug things in, we should get our surface area. Now, this looks quite nasty, but we can do some things to simplify this down a little bit and actually take an antiderivative. So let's work on it. Uh, right off the bat, I see I have a 2 pi and I have a 1 fourth. All of that can come outside of the integral, and I'll just write that as a pi over 2 times the integral from negative 2 to 2 of this guy, which is e to the 2x plus e to the minus 2x <coughs> times, now we need to do a little work inside here. So we get the square root of 1 plus, if I square this out, I get this guy squared, which is e to the 4x over 4. Then 2 times the first is e to the 2x times the second is negative 1 half. Square the second guy, and I get positive e to the negative 4x over 4 dx. I can combine the 1 and the negative 1 half to get me a positive 1 half. And when I do, this thing factors to a perfect square, which is very convenient. So let's write this as a, the perfect square that it is. If this were gone and this was a positive 1 half, then it would just factor back to this, except it would have a plus instead of a minus in between the two terms. So let's rewrite. This is equal to pi over 2 times the integral from negative 2 to 2 
of e to the 2x plus e to the negative 2x times the square root of, now this is going to be e to the 2x over 2 plus e to the negative 2x over 2 quantity squared dx. All right, so we have the square root of this square, and we can now cancel the square root in the square, and we get the following. Notice, when I take the square root of this square, I have a 1 half inside both of these. That 1 half could now come outside the integral, and I could just write it this way. This is pi over 4. The 4 is coming from, I'm taking this half out, once I cancel that square root in that square, I've got integral from minus 2 to 2 of e to the 2x plus e to the negative 2x times, I brought that 1 half out already, so all that's left is e to the 2x plus e to the negative 2x dx. Okay, I'm running out of room here. So I may erase over on this side and <clears throat> keep working. So what I need to do next is let's foil that out and get this into a form where I can take a nice antiderivative. So if I keep working, I get this is equal to uh, pi over 4 times the integral from negative 2 to 2 of e to the x, 2x times e to the 2x is e to the 4x. e to the 2x times e to the negative 2x is e to the 0, but e to the 0 is just 1. e to the negative 2x times e to the 2x is e to the 0, which is just 1. And e to the negative 2x times e to the negative 2x is e to the negative 4x. And now I can put down dx. Now I can take an antiderivative. I get my pi over 4, and then I take an antiderivative here, and antiderivative of e to the 4x is 1 fourth e to the 4x. I've got 1 plus 1 is 2, antiderivative of 2 is 2x, and the antiderivative of e to the negative 4x is minus 1 fourth, e to the minus 4x. Uh, all of that's evaluated from minus 2 to 2. Okay, let's keep going. I still have this pi over 4 sitting out here. Now we're going to plug in 2. When I plug in 2, I get 1 fourth e to the 8 uh, plus 4 uh, plug in 2, I get minus 1 fourth e to the negative 8. Uh, all of that is, now I plug in minus 2, minus uh, 1 fourth e to the negative 8, minus 4, pl uh, let's see, minus 1 fourth e to the 8. Okay, uh, combine all of this stuff together, and what do we get? We get a minus 1 fourth e to the 8th minus another fourth e to the, I'm sorry, I've got a 1 fourth e to the 8th minus a minus 1 fourth e to the 8th, so plus another fourth. So that's a pi over 4 times 1 half of an e to the 8th. Then we have a 4 minus minus 4, so plus an 8. And then we have a minus 1 fourth e to the negative 8 minus a 1 fourth e to the negative 8. So that's a minus 1 half e to the negative 8. And that is about as good as it gets on this one. So the answer to how much surface area there is on the original function y as it's revolved around the x-axis is given by this expression.